monarch butterflies are an endangered species, why are they so important to our ecosystem? Well, monarchs are one of the more complicated insects out there. They, they're pollinators, and so they play a very important uh, role for plant reproduction. And uh, because they cover so much ground, because their occurrence is uh, you know, multinational, continent-wide, their impacts are very widespread. Um, of course, they're caterpillars when they're uh, when the monarchs are babies, they do a lot of munching on plants and will only eat milkweeds. And then at every stage in their life cycle, of course, from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to adult, they can be food for other creatures. So they're part of the food chain. Why should the community care about their existence? Besides the fact they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. pretty, pretty works for a lot of people. I think in the insect world, monarchs are, uh, they're kind of ambassadors, if you will. Uh, the world of insects is immense and they're uh, tremendously important for all of our ecosystems, but they're largely unrecognized because they're so small. Why do you love monarchs? How did you get interested in them? There was that one time when I was just a few years old, six, seven years old, uh, when I was a kid, and all of a sudden there was a million monarchs uh, in trees just, uh, just a couple miles away from my house. I would say that was the first, first uh, note to self that, oh man, wow. Where was that? What was that like? Uh, that was in Milwaukee, where I grew up. It was uh, right along the shore of Lake Michigan, up in the bluffs there. And well, you've seen photographs of monarchs, uh, thick as leaves on trees, but orange, and that's the way it was. You could walk right in and out of the bluffs, and the branches were right here at eye level. You could touch, you could look, they were, there they were, right there. So it made them very real and uh, very, very fascinating. Can you tell us about their migration patterns, especially in New Mexico? In New Mexico, as far as we know, uh, involves uh, winter going to Mexico and then some, uh, spring and summer coming back north. On the west coast of, of North America, there's a separate population. We don't think we're contributing here in New Mexico. So far, all the evidence indicates that our monarchs go south to Mexico, to the uh, central highlands in Mexico. And then during the flight north, mm -hmm. which comes into New Mexico in March, March and April primarily, um, females are looking to place eggs on milkweeds. Ah. That's what their caterpillars eat. That's, uh, there's many different kinds of milkweeds, but it has to be a milkweed of some kind. During that fall migration in New Mexico, we, have, uh, we see it best expressed really in southeastern New Mexico, uh, where we can have on occasion thousands of monarchs roosting in the trees mm. in uh, uh, Lee County, Roosevelt County, uh, that neck of the woods. Only for a few days, usually in October. Uh, we think there's something similar going on in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, which is nicely aligned north to south. It uh, has a lot of the resources that monarchs need. They have uh, nectar to feed on. Uh, there's moisture, water if they need that. There's protection from storms, trees to roost in. But we don't see the same numbers there. At least hmm. we haven't yet. Is there any way to track them? Yes, we do track them. Okay, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Monarchs have been tagged for the purpose of figuring out where they go in the fall since the 1960s. Hmm. And that was how they found the overwintering locations in Mexico uh, through very dedicated many, many years of uh, primitive tags, uh, long distances, uh, failure really for several years until finally it was discovered. A tag monarch, was, that was, monarch that was tagged in the northeastern part of our continent was found in Michoacan. That tag, you know, monarchs don't swap tags. Right. So that had to be the same monarch that was tagged up in uh, Ontario or something like that. Uh, we, can, we can link them for, uh, from the point they were tagged at to mm -hmm. the point they were found at. Uh, and so that's been going on now for about 50 years. In New Mexico, not quite so long, but we do have... Um, an effort every fall to apply tags to monarchs and uh, kind of confirm that they go to Mexico, but we're still kind of curious too about uh, the populations that are in coastal California for the winter. Uh, those are typically west coast monarchs, uh, but you know, how far inland do they come? We have the Continental Divide running right through New Mexico and Arizona monarchs, the tagging over there suggests that some go to California, some go to Mexico, and maybe some of uh, some of New Mexico's monarchs might 
work their way over to California for the winter too. And that's one of the, one of the questions we're trying to answer. How are citizens involved in that tagging process? Well, there's lots of online opportunities to participate in monarch research. Um, we're currently tagging monarchs uh, through an organization called Southwest Monarch Study, and they're based out of Phoenix. And uh, they can give you tags, they can give you uh, training. There are other outfits that do lots of other things too. Any monarch observation is very valuable, especially in New Mexico where we have lots of open country and not that many observers. Uh, we still have, um, I would say, gaps in our maps uh, in areas where, that are very rural and there's just not very many people out uh, making observations. Uh, so I would encourage anybody really, especially in some of the le less populated parts of the state, to plant some flowers, invite some monarchs, and then pay attention. If you see one, uh, you can uh, take a picture with your digital camera, with your phone, and upload that photograph to one of many different websites. Uh, Journey North is a good website. The monarch is part of our ecosystem, but they're also kind of a symbol of our nation. Why do we as a society need them? We need you know, all the different pieces of our ecosystem. Monarchs are a very obvious one, a very big one, and we need them because uh, that ecosystem supports us physically. It also supports us spiritually, and uh, it's a connector, really, uh, for uh, people, uh, not just connecting people with, uh, you know, tag a monarch and you're connected to the monarchs, but you're there with other people. And we get connected with people in other countries. It's kind of a hemispheric mm. uh, cycle that we're participating in. As we've you know, kind of grown from little family to tribe, to city, to state, to country, really we're a planet now.